Thank you. Okay. The title of this is Raptor Love. It wasn't really supposed to be that. It was supposed to be how I fell in love with a red-tailed hawk, even though I had to endure frustration, humiliation, and multiple trips to the emergency room. So now we can hit it, Steve. Well, it started some 26 years ago when my, my uh, wife and I moved into a home and we got a nice wedding uh, and housewarming present from some of our friends. So it was on the honey to-do list. It was on the honey to-do list. And finally she said, just put it up. So I did. Then all of a sudden, hey, birding was easy. All of a sudden these wonderful little birds came around and they're cute and they're colorful. And you know, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, what the heck are they? Because as you notice, they're not wearing a name tag. So I don't know if any of you have ever tried to identify birds, but sometimes it's difficult. So I went out and I bought a book, Birds by Color. Hey, sounds good, right? It was pretty easy. Until they were all little brown jobs. <laughs> so then I got a bigger book. Then I got paper cuts from turning the pages so often trying to figure out what the birds were. And I said, there's got to be a better way. Eureka! Did you know you can pay somebody to tell you what the birds are? <laughs> this was good. This was really good. I started doing bird walks, and then bird trips, and then bird festivals. And you know, in all that time, you kind of start to get a favorite. Well, I did. It was raptors. These guys have got eyes that they can see eight to 10 times better than you can. They've got talons that are 500 to 1,000 PSI, and they've got a beak like my mother-in-law, they could open any can in the world. <laughs> this was my first love. This was the red tail I saw up at Big Sky. And there she was, all wrapped around her kill and protecting it from me. And I'm only like six feet away, and I'm going, man, this is really, really easy. Well, in 26 years, no flowers, no cards, no letters, nothing. She never called, you know? I was out then at Red Rocks. And I was looking at these beautiful little baby swallows here, okay? And all of a sudden, whoosh! <laughs> screaming by at 200 miles an hour, talons extended fully like this, was a prairie falcon. The problem is I didn't know if it was me or the bird, other birds that she was after. Then I was out with the family one time. Well, out there in the distance was this big mass of big birds, and I said, being quite cocky at the time. Hey, look at all those eagles! My brother-in-law said, yep, them black eagles. <laughs> so sometimes birding can be dangerous. Here I was in the Chiricahua Mountains looking at the wonderful Mexican spotted owl. I grabbed my camera, I backed up, I was getting it in frame, and then I fell off of this big boulder here <laughs> and landed down there, and can you say hello, emergency room? Well, there I was, and I have to tell you, it wasn't the first time. There is the torn rotator cup. There were the bloody knees and elbows from the coral. There was, oh yes, the pine needle in my eye. And I finally said, you know, loving them has got to be easier than chasing them. So here in Bozeman, I Google, everybody knows Google, typed in Bozeman, typed in raptors, and what came up? Montana Raptor Conservation Center. And I said, cool. I gave him a call and I said, hey, you know, I'm interested in raptors. Can you tell me some of the things that you've done? No problem. They said, you know, we do rescue, we do rehabilitation, we let the birds go, we educate people. They even work with other groups to try and conserve birds. I said, hey, that's really pretty cool, but Give me some real hard facts. I said, tell me about some of the birds. So one of their success stories was this big old girl here who was picked up harassing campers. We brought her in. We put some weight on her. We let her go. Two weeks later, she was brought in again harassing campers for food. And that's when they figured out that she was human imprinted, and now she is an education bird. The second thing was we had a red-tailed hawk that got caught up in wire. Well, she was brought in, All West Vet did a surgery, took care of that wing, taught her how to fly again, and the same two guys on the road crew that found her 
were given the opportunity to let her go into the wild. This girl, very young, was brought in, and unfortunately, she was staggering around, couldn't hold her head up. It was lead poisoning from shotgun pellets. We managed, after eight rounds of chelation, to get her going. And as you can see, she's out there and flying in the wild now. So how many of these things really occur? You know, as I found out, they normally do about 150 birds a year, 150. Last year in 2013, they did almost 200. But the eagles and the owls, man, they're over the top. Why? Because we found out that over 90% of all the losses of raptors are because of us. Almost 75% because of running into something, cars, you know, fences, etc. 10% from shotgun pellets, and other 10% from people handling the birds. So I said, oh my gosh, they've only got like two full-time people there working and a few other, you know, volunteers running around. These guys need help. Why? Well, I mean, they're cute little faces, but I don't know about you. I'm not taking home a bunch of owls in my house like a puppy. So anyway, the answer was really simple, and it's very easy, very effective. Volunteer. You, have you got office skills? You, can you lick an envelope? Hey, want to get up in front and talk about some birds? All of these things, everybody could do volunteer work. And so I said, why not? So now that I've been here, I'd like to ask you, look up into the sky. See the raptors. Enjoy them. Get your kids out there. Educate them about the birds, all the birds. Tell your friends who are hunters. Don't use lead shot. And most of all, reach inside, find your passion, and get out there and volunteer for somebody. Thank you very much.